My name is Patrick Thaddeus Jackson. Uh, that's a mouthful, and a lot of my students and colleagues just call me by my initials and call me PTJ, so I'll respond to that, too. Um, I am a professor at the American University in Washington, D.C., and one of the things I have been doing a lot of work on in the last couple of decades has been philosophy of science and questions around what makes something uh, a valid claim claim in a, in a scientific idiom. And the other thing I've been doing a lot of work on is questions of relations and pragmatism and how taking those kinds of notions on board changes our understanding of the social world. So those are probably the two things that I'm at the moment most interested in and, and are doing a lot of thinking about. <music> The course is called Analytical Pragmatism. The idea here is it's going to uh, take those two interests that I just mentioned and kind of put them together. On the one hand, a certain approach to doing scientific research, which is not the standard kind of neopositivist hypothesis testing and statistical thing, which there's plenty of other good courses for. But with this, we're going to be looking more at how to use ideal typical models to interrogate different things. The other important component of this course is that it's going to be very much rooted in pragmatism, uh, sort of an American philosophical tradition in which we're really interested in how practices and social relations generate action and uh, different kinds of outcomes. So my hope for a student taking the class is that you would, at the end of the week, be better versed in what that tradition entails and understand how framing your project through those lenses would be different than, say, framing your project through more kind of standard international relations, political science, uh, neo-positivist forms of inquiry. Uh, you can get some very different kinds of results and engage in some very different kinds of information gathering and analysis using these sorts of, of techniques. So... <laughs> Unlike some of the courses in which there's a particular piece of software that people would learn, uh, the kind of work that we're doing in this course uses a variety of different kinds of tools and techniques, and we will canvas and talk about a number of them, but we're not going to go really in depth into a very particular, say, software package or something like that. Uh, a lot of the work that one does in this sort of analytical, pragmatist vein uh, encompasses some of the techniques you might find in certain kinds of critical ethnography in certain kinds of historical sociology. So you will be using a number of those kinds of tools and thinking really hard about how adopting this sort of an approach and taking this sort of a perspective would change your individual projects. We'll get a chance to game that out, play it out a little bit in conversation and see what it would really be like to do different kinds of work in this analytical pragmatic vein. <laughs> The interesting thing about a course in analytical pragmatism is even though it's relatively new in the social sciences, the sort of Anglophone social sciences now, uh, if you look back historically, the, this was actually you know, much more well-established in traditions of historical sociology and other kinds of philosophical approaches to thinking about government and society. Uh, it's that during the 20th century, for various reasons, the neo-positivist liberalism kind of became ascendant as ways of thinking about social order. Uh, so in a way, even though this is a particularly new set of things in terms of the present history of the field, it's actually a very old, very venerable tradition. Um, so part of what we're going to be doing is going back and looking at some of the, uh, shall we say, forgotten classics of this kind of work from uh, at least as far back as the middle of the 19th century.